have a special announcement to make this morning. We have a special announcement to make. Um, on behalf of Pastor Allen and the leadership team here at Messiah, um, we're pleased to invite you to join us next Sunday, July 16th, for the installation service of our new senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Stephen Van Fossen. So we are rejoicing that the Lord has led our new pastor and his beautiful wife here to Messiah to shepherd us, and we're looking forward to celebrating next week with our church family. So please join us. Good morning, Messiah. Good morning. Are you glad to be here today? Yeah. Are you excited? I always get it nervous, like when they say installation services, because I'm like, I think about like guys coming out to install a new refrigerator, and you know, are they gonna plug things into me or something? I don't know. I just, I was thinking about that there where I was. I have ADD moments, so. Uh, if you are a first-time guest here today, we are so blessed that you have joined us today. We are so blessed to have you. I will tell you personally that I consider guests to be gifts from God. And so uh, if, if you are a first-time guest here, if there's anything that we can do to serve you, if there's any way uh, that we can be supportive of you, we are here for you today. Uh, we just want to show the love of Jesus to you. I think if you are a first-time guest, you may have gotten a, uh, a, a welcome packet in that. There's some information about the church, and there's a connection card in there. If you want to fill that out, we'd love for you to fill that out. Uh, let us know. I'd also like to give a personal invitation to you that if, uh, if this is your first Sunday here, uh, when the service is over, I know we're going to be going down after service. We have donuts and coffee after service and do all the fun stuff down below. Uh, Congdon's Donuts. I don't know if you guys know what that is. If you're a visitor, yeah, uh, I've discovered those things. <laughs> Woo. Uh, but anyway, uh, I would love it if you would come and talk to Marcy and I because we would love to get to know you and meet you and have a conversation here a little bit about your story. Uh, so please do that. Uh, this is my first Sunday to do actually announcements, so I'm just kind of winging this. So, so you just they they gave me this they they gave me a schedule and they wrote it out like for word, like as if I'm going to read that. Um, I don't even read my own sermons. So uh, anyway, uh, I'll just let the Holy Spirit guide us here. A uh, couple other things I want to remind you of is that we just kicked off a new Bible study. Uh, on the book of Revelation, it started this, it says, it started yesterday here at, at 9.30, it's downstairs in, in the lower room, and so uh, it's based on a video and book series, it's a six-week study, it's going to be held in the fellowship hall, uh, Mary Parker, Mary, where are you back there? Mary is leading this, so if you would like to be a part of this, it doesn't matter that you missed the first week, because there's still five more weeks, Okay. Uh, but if you'd like to be a part of this, talk to Mary afterwards. She'll let you know how to get the book and get everything uh, and then come out and, and join that. Also, just uh, we're going to be taking up the offering here in a second. So there's a screen. Is there a screen up above me? No, that's me uh, up there. Um, but anyway, uh, if, if we're going to be taking up the offering here in a moment. But on the screen, you'll see multiple ways uh, that you can give here at Messiah, uh, and so uh, we do a PayPal account, so if, if you don't have cash with you and you want to give through the online giving, you can do that, uh, and so just uh, want to let you know that also this morning. So as the ushers are coming forward, uh, do I pray or do I ask one of you to pray? Me? Oh. Oh. <laughs> God, you are so awesome. And, uh, Lord, we just thank you for all of the blessings that you pour out upon us each and every day. And, Lord, the, the generosity that you show to us. And, Lord, as we, uh, as we worship through this time of giving, Lord, this is, this is our opportunity to be obedient to you. And so, Lord, I ask that you would bless this offering today. 
Lord, I ask that we would be good stewards of the resources that you give us, Lord, that we would uh, further your kingdom and, and do the things that you have called us to do in this special community. Lord, again, we thank you for all you do for us. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. I want to ask that you guys stand up and join me in singing this song. Because when you speak, when you move, when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see, and what we seek. And when you come in the room, when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes
can all be seated, and at this time, I'd like to dismiss all of the kids to Children's Church. So Marcy and I have been having a wonderful time over this past week getting to know you, hanging out with you. You guys are feeding us like crazy. Uh, it's wonderful. All of it's wonderful. Uh, just blessed, uh, excited to, to get it involved in the community. To We're, we're discovering all of the... I, I don't think I've ever lived anywhere where there is so much beauty. I mean, it's almost overwhelming. Uh, you, you drive into the, to the woods, it's beautiful. You drive out to the ocean, it's beautiful. You know, I mean, it's just everywhere you look, it's like uh, a beautiful picture. And so we're so blessed to be here and we're excited and uh, uh, we're kind of adjusting and, and getting all of the things together. We're still waiting for a house just to give you an update on that. Uh, the latest is the 18th of this month. So uh, now, I don't know, we've got a pod full of our stuff somewhere between Illinois and here. I don't know where it's at, so uh, we're hoping we'll get that there by the 18th also. But uh, just to, I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update on um, what's happening with us in our lives and how uh, we're adjusting and getting everything. So just thank you. Uh, bear with me as far as names. Um, I have six children. I can't remember half of their names <laughs> half the time. Uh, so uh, if, if, if you would, just for a while, just every time you introduce yourself or come up to me, you say, my name is, okay, and, and, and I just keep putting that in my head, and then, and then eventually uh, we'll have it memorized. So uh, I switched over to a, a little stand today because I was afraid I was going to push that thing off, and that would not have been good on a, uh, on a, a Sunday morning. Well, it would have been exciting, but I'm just not sure it would have been good. So, um, so I want to talk to you today on a subject uh, that I think is very important for us to embrace and to realize. And what that subject is, and it's, I'm going to dive deeper into this, but it's the realization that God is for us. Amen? Amen. So I don't know about you today, but I have discovered in my life and for myself that life can be filled with challenges. Anybody here get an amen on that? Anybody dealt with any challenges lately in life? You know? I, I, I think that there's this, this perception, okay, or some who have this perception that being a follower of Jesus Christ insulates us uh, from the trouble of the world. And almost, I think sometimes we think that, or some think that uh, when you become a follower of Jesus Christ, you automatically just become immune to bad things happening to you. All right? I mean, is that right? I mean... Is, everybody's life is perfect in here, right? You'd never have any struggles, never have any problems, okay? Um, I, think, I think I realize I, if you've been a Christian for more than one day, okay, you realize that's not necessarily 
true, okay? We have trials just like everyone else, okay? As a matter of fact, James wrote a whole book on trials, okay? And James basically said um, there will be trials. He didn't say there might be. He didn't say uh, some of you will have trials. He says there will be trials, okay? We all struggle with the same things, like we struggle with illness. We struggle with pain. We, uh, we struggle, yes, even with heartbreak sometimes. Uh, we all live in a fallen world, okay? This world is fallen, okay? We live in this fallen world, and we all face many of the circumstances that everybody else in the world faces, as a matter of fact, in Matthew chapter 5, and I'm going to read verse 44 and 45, but I think they're only going to put 45. It says, but I say to you, now he begins this and he says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. For he makes, this is what I want you to hear real quick. He makes the sun rise on the evil and the good, all right? And he sends the rain on the just and the unjust. So in other words, we all experience rain in our lives at times. And sometimes we as followers of Jesus, we really, sometimes I think we can get discouraged by the events in our lives. Sometimes I think that it can become overwhelming. Sometimes our hearts hurt because of the things that happen in our lives that are beyond our control. There are things that will happen in your life. There are things that you will go through. There will be trials that you go through that are beyond your control. You can't do anything about it, you know. Uh, maybe you have a conversation with a doctor that you'd rather not have. Maybe you have a child who has gone down the wrong path or a longtime Christian friend or friend who does something that hurts you deeply. And if we're not careful, all of these things can crush us. They can push in on us. But this morning, I want to give you some encouragement. Because in the midst of everything that you go through in life, in the midst of all the trials, you never, ever have to walk alone. Amen? So I want to read from Romans chapter 8 this morning. And this is a letter of Paul to the church in Rome. And I want to read verses 31 through 39. Uh, if you have your Bibles, you can turn there. If you have an iPod or an iPad or your phone or whatever your app, whatever you have. But here's what it says, starting with verse 31. It says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. Make sure you, you read that word there, that three-letter word, all. How will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any a charge against you, against, and he says, God's elect, okay? It is God who justifies who is to condemn Jesus Christ is the one who died? More than that, who was raised, who is in the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all things, hear this, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels and nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor heights nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I could say nothing else today. That in itself is enough. 
Now, that's not going to happen because I'm going to preach now. (laughs) But you see, in this letter, what we realize is that Paul, he was no stranger to suffering. He understood what it was what it meant to suffer. And and this church, the church in Rome, neither were they that he was writing to in this letter. They understood. They were no strangers to the issue of suffering. But what I'm excited to tell you this morning, what I want you to hear today, is that he gives them in this letter, he gives them words of encouragement, he gives them words through the word of God, And these encouragements that he gives to them are for you and I sitting here right now today. Paul, now, I like the way he does this. He makes it real simple. He just says, you know what? I'm going to give you four questions. These four questions, these are going to answer it for you. And they're rhetorical questions. You guys know what a rhetorical question is? Okay, sometimes people don't understand when I say it's a rhetorical question and they start answering me back, okay? A rhetorical question means you don't have to answer. You just have to listen to it, okay? So he gives these rhetorical questions and then he gives the answer to them. And so what I want to do this morning, just for a few moments, is I want to look at these questions. I want to look at the encouragement that we find in the answers to these questions. So let's just dive in this morning. The first question that Paul asks in this passage of Scripture is simply this. If God is for us, who can be against us? Say that with me. If God is for us, who can be against us? That's a powerful question. I mean, Paul basically phrases this question in such a way that he wants us to know God is for us. Do you believe that today? God is on your side. He's on my side. So if this is true, shouldn't this be a wonderful encouragement for us? I mean, shouldn't it? We should know. God is for us. If God is for us, who can be against us? Think about it. If this statement is true, then we as followers of Jesus Christ, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we have, listen to this, we have the creator of the universe. We have the God of all who is standing up for us. He's not only standing for us, he's standing with us, okay? Now, how do we know that? How do we know that God is for us, and how do we know it that this statement is true? I mean, come on. We live in a world where things are pushing against us all the time. It can feel like that's not true sometimes. So how do we know it's true? Well, listen to what it says in verse 32 again. He who did not spare, listen to this, his own son, but gave him up for us all, who will he not also with him graciously give us all things? So what we can learn from this, what we can realize here this morning from this, that assures us that God is with us, is he went so far as to give his only son on our behalf. Think about that. He didn't spare his own son. God sent his son. He sent Jesus to this world, okay? He, Jesus, we know, was the only perfect human being to walk on this planet, okay? Fully human, fully God, okay? All right? Jesus, he's the only person, and and he went around and he healed people. He touched lives. The Bible tells us that Jesus was, was the expressed image of God. In other words, what Jesus is is what we just said. He's God in flesh. He's Emmanuel. He's God with us. Jesus is God with us, this perfect sinless, I know I'm beating this down, but I want you to hear this, this perfect sinless person went to a cross and died for us. God didn't spare his son, but he carried out his entire plan, which includes Jesus dying for you and me. I want you to catch that. Who did Jesus and why did Jesus die? There's two words, two words that I want you to remember. They're found in verse 32. The reason Jesus came and died was 
for us. Say that with me. For, for us. Not a lot of enthusiasm there. I'm going to try that again. All right? You ought to be excited about this. Jesus died for us. That's right. He died for us, okay? He didn't spare his only son. Uh, he delivered him to a cross for you and I. Jesus died for our sin. God sent his son to die on that cross so that you and I could experience forgiveness. God delivered Jesus to the cross so that you and I might live. We can know without a shadow of a doubt today that God is for us. He's with us. We don't have, to, we, we, we don't have to, 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 to worry about it. We don't have to question it, okay? All we have to do is look at the cross, okay? While we were still sinners, that's what it says in Romans 5, 8. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God was for us ever before or before we were ever for him. Isn't that amazing? Doesn't that excite you? I mean, if God loves us so much that he sent his son to die for us before we ever trusted in him, how much more is he working and with us now? So what does that mean? Well, that means this, simply. Folks, there's going to be people that are going to come against you. It's going to happen, okay? Okay? There are going to be times when you're going to have to deal with sickness, with disease, with heartbreak. You're going to experience pain. You're going to experience suffering. But hear this. Because of our Lord and Savior, those things that come against us will not be successful in stopping us because we have God on our side. Remember what Paul says? One of my favorite things that Paul says is, if I live, I live for Christ. If I die, now this is a Steve Van Fossen translation, if I die, woohoo! I mean, how, how much better can you live than that? I mean, if I live, I live for Christ. If not, I'm going to be with Christ. Okay? Wow! We have God on our side. When the load gets heavy, we have God there to help us. He says, my, what does he say? My yoke is easy. My burden is light. When it seems like we're going to stumble and fall, God is for us. He proved all of that on the cross. Now, that leads us to the second question. I'm going to, have to, I'm going to try to speak clearly today. If God is for us, then question two is simply this. Who can bring any accusation against us? Now, more specifically in this passage, I love what it says in here. It says, who shall bring any charge against God's elect? Did you realize that you are God's elect? If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you are his elect. We live in a world where the motto is, the end justifies the mean. Have you ever heard anybody say that? The end justifies the mean, okay? You know what that means? That simply means that anything goes to get what you want in the end. People will walk over you. They will step ahead of you. They will do whatever is necessary in the world to get what they want. People will twist the truth about you. You ever had anybody twist the truth about you? People will tell lies on you, okay? They will even set their integrity aside to get ahead of you at times. Listen, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ today, I'm just going to give you heads up. There's a target on your back, especially in the world that we live right now, okay? When we stand up for what is right, things like morality and righteousness, they get in the way of the world's goals, and we will become targets. 
as followers of Jesus Christ. One of, the, one, one of the favorite ways for the world to target Christian followers today is to attack their character. It's going to happen, all right? They say things like, we can't love God or others because we don't agree. The whole concept of agreeing to disagree doesn't exist in our society today anymore, does it? Doesn't seem like it does. I mean, uh, they say we're preaching hate because we don't always affirm, okay? They make all kinds of charges against us, and they justify those charges by saying things like we're intolerant or, or my truth is not your truth or whatever. Can I give you just a heads up real quick, and I might get in trouble for this, but... My truth isn't always the truth. Did you hear that? There is my truth. Sometimes there's your truth. But then there's the truth. And the truth is found in the word of God. I'm going to get off on a whole other tangent with that, but we're going to pull it back in and we're not going to do that, okay? In all of the midst of all this, in all of the, in all of the midst of this, okay, who can bring any accusation against us? Let me remind all of us, God is the one who justifies. I don't justify, you don't justify, the world doesn't justify. God is the one who justifies. The world may make all kinds of terrible charges against us as Christians, but they can't make the judgment. God is the only one who justifies. And we have already been justified by our faith in Jesus Christ. Now let me just clarify that real quick. That doesn't mean that we can come down to an altar, give our hearts to Jesus, stand up and say, hey, I'm a follower of Jesus now. I've given my heart to Jesus. And then walk out that door and do whatever we want. Okay, it's not, we don't get tickets to heaven. All right? I got saved back in 1975. I got my ticket. I haven't said a word about Jesus since. It's not the way it works. We're called to live and love like Jesus. We're called to live our lives in such a way, you'll hear me say this a thousand, if not a million times over the next years. We are called to live our lives in such a way as though Jesus were living our life for us. When we look into the mirror, we don't see, I don't see Steve. If I'm living the way I'm supposed to be living, I see Jesus. Okay? That's the way it should be. Now, that doesn't mean we're supposed to be perfect. Don't give me that. When it says, be ye perfect at the end of Matthew, be ye perfect as I am perfect, sometimes I think we get confused about that. i got to get you out of here in about two hours. So, anyway, I'll go quick on this, all right? That perfect, be perfect as I am perfect, does not mean that we're supposed to be perfect in the sense of never flawed, never making any mistakes. But what it means is we're supposed to be whole in our relationship with the Father. That word perfect actually can be translated as being whole, wholeness. And so, in other words, what that means is that we are surrendered. We are giving ourselves to God and allowing God to transform us into who he would call us to be. And when we are surrendering ourselves daily, dying to ourselves, then we're able to walk in wholeness of Christ. Okay, that was a side note, wasn't in my notes. That happens sometimes, so let me get back. So who can bring charge against us when the judge has already pronounced us not guilty? You see... When we are in Christ, we have been set free. Now, that leads to the third question that Paul poses. He asks, and it's a, new, a, a question of encouragement. He says this, not only who can come against us, okay, but who can condemn us? Think about that. There are many times in our lives where things make us feel as if we are condemned and defeated. Anybody here ever felt defeated? Anyone here ever felt like you were just, like, I'm, I'm, I'm a failure. I've failed. What's the use? Okay. Paul says this. He says, who can condemn us? We may face hard times in our lives where it may seem like we have no escape. 
Maybe we go to the, and this can take, this is, this is things that are in our control and things that are not in our control. I mean, maybe, maybe we go to the doctor and we get bad news and it makes us feel doomed, okay? Or maybe we get that bank statement and we look at it and it makes us feel doomed, okay? Or maybe we, we go to the job again tomorrow and it makes us feel like you ever go to work and you feel like you're convicted, like, like, like I mean, like a prisoner? Hopefully not, but sometimes that job makes us feel like, oh, we're in change, you know? Or maybe there's heartbreak, you know, that we experience in our lives and, and we feel like that heartbreak is a death sentence. Maybe there are people in our lives that make us feel like dirt. They make us feel like we have no escape. Listen, folks, we will never be, if we are walking with Jesus, if our eyes are on him, if we are surrendered to him, we will never be condemned with Jesus. According to this verse, Jesus is the only one who has the power to condemn. And what is he doing for us? It says he died for us. He died so that you and I might escape the condemnation that comes with sin. And then, what's even better is he didn't just die. Guess what he did? You know what he did. What happened? It's one thing if he went to the grave, but what did he do three days later? That's right. He walked out of that grave victorious. He rose again. His resurrection means death is no longer our eternity. It's no longer our condemnation. He was the first fruit of all who believe. He conquered death and he proved death cannot have its hold on us. He has promised us death is not the end, but only the beginning. Let me explain that to you real quick. If you can imagine, okay, um, you can't see it. But over here at the very, there's the corner of this step right here, okay? If that is the beginning of your life, okay, and you follow Jesus Christ and you believe in eternity, okay, and we run, I'm not going to run because I might fall. If we run all the way over to the other end, to the other point on this, let's just hypothetically imagine this is birth and eternity okay your life here on earth okay you live 70 80 90 100 years i'm shooting for 120 not sure if i'm gonna make it okay that isn't even a speck on the scheme and our eternity is in his hands. He is interceding for us. This life is but a speck. He is right now interceding for you and I. Jesus didn't ascend to heaven just to wait to come back. He's not some deity in the sky out of our reach. He is with us, walking with us, working with us. He is right now also sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. He is there praying for you right now. He is standing before God right now on your behalf. You have representation in heaven right now, and it's Jesus Christ. I get excited when I think about that stuff. With God, with Jesus standing for us, how can anyone be against us? You see that bad news from the doctor? That bank statement? That job? That heartbreak? That will not stop Jesus from standing on your behalf. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
And that leads me to the fourth and the final question that Paul presents as encouragement. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Verse 35 through 39. Who can separate us from the love of Jesus? Now, there are times in our lives when we think maybe God has forgotten us. I'll be honest, there have been moments in my life when I felt like, uh, are you up there? Remember me? I'm Steve, you know? The one that can't keep a straight thought all the time, you know? The one that's running around all the time acting crazy. Do you remember me? There are times in our lives when we think or we feel like God may have forgotten us. Paul mentions events here that may cause us to think we've been abandoned by God. He says sometimes we can feel abandoned by God when we go through stress, when we go through heartbreak, when we, uh, when we face hard times in life, okay? Uh, when we face tribulation, when, when we face times of distress, we all get to those points in life sometimes where things seem to be too heavy to bear, there are times when we wonder if God is really there. There are times when we feel like we're alone. Anyone ever felt that? We all face persecution. We all face the sword at times. There are times that come when, 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 when we face things, when things happen to us and they're not our fault. I didn't do anything. You ever, you, ever, you, ever, you ever find yourself sometimes you're like getting attacked by the enemy? Stuff's going, it's like one thing after another and you're like, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Why? It's going to happen. We all face persecution. We all face the sword. People, for whatever reason, there are going to be times when people are going to make us feel miserable. There is going to be times when it feels like the whole world is against us and we have no help. And, and, and there's going to be times when it feels like we're facing death. And we're going to ask the question. It's okay to ask questions. We're going to ask the question, why would God let this happen to me? It says famine, nakedness, danger. You know what he's talking about there? Those are the physical calamities, the physical things that we go through in life. There are times when we're going to struggle materially. There's going to be times when we don't have the things that we need, where we can't make that paycheck stretch to meet the bills, okay? There's going to be more this than we have of this. And we're going to feel like we're, you know, we're, sometimes we're going to feel like we're in quicksand. When I was a child growing up, one of the greatest fears I ever had in my life was falling into quicksand. I lived in Ohio. Quicksand, there's no quicksand in Ohio. I don't know why I was afraid of quicksand, because I watched the cartoons. Everybody was falling into quicksand, you know? Sometimes it feels like we're like, there's quicksand in front of us. But it's not. None of us go through life without facing these situations and trials. Sooner or later, we all have suffering. We all have distress. We all have persecution. We all have uh, material needs. Does this mean that we've somehow lost God's love for us? Folks, we are never separated from the love of God. Death and life cannot separate us from the love of God. Paul wants us to be encouraged today. Spiritual beings cannot separate us from the love of God. Time cannot separate us from the love of God. Our emotions cannot separate us from the love of God. We are forever, hear this, loved and in the hands of our Heavenly Father. Nothing can keep us from being loved by God. Sin can't keep us. Let me tell you something. Even when you're not walking with God, he's walking with you. Now that doesn't mean there isn't judgment for not making the right choice. But God never stops loving us. He never walks away from us. We may walk away from him, but he does not ever walk away from us. Our salvation with our eyes on Jesus Christ, if we 
trust and follow him, our salvation is secure. You cannot, I'm going to say this very, uh, hear me, I'm going to say it with a pun, okay? You cannot lose your salvation. You can give up your salvation maybe, but you can't lose it. I lose my keys all the time, all right? There's never been a point in my life when I was like, what happened to my salvation? I know I laid it around here somewhere. I was saved once. I'm not acting like it right now, but anyway. No, you can't, okay? Our salvation is secure. There is nothing that anyone, anything can do to separate us from the love of God. So, where does that put us today? And yes, I'm wrapping it up. I was joking. We're not going to be here till 2. Where does that leave us today? I want you to hear this. We are more than conquerors. Yeah. A conqueror. And Reagan, you can start coming up to close us here in a second. A conqueror is someone who cannot be defeated. A conqueror has the power to stand strong in the face of danger. A conqueror is someone who overcomes all obstacles they face. Folks, that's what the word of God says that we are in Jesus Christ. We are not conquerors because of who we are. We are conquerors because of whose we are. Did you hear that? And so, we are conquerors because of the love of God. Because he loves us and his love is in us and for us. With God on our side, nothing, hear this, will ever be able to defeat us. Do you believe that this morning? Let's stand. So this morning, it's only my second Sunday here, so um, I don't know what you do. I don't know what it looks like, but here's what I want you to know. I want you to know if there's something that you're going through right now and you are experiencing a great level of of struggle, if you feel like the enemy is attacking you at every side, God is here for you. You can bring it to him. You can pray where you're at. You can come up here and kneel on these steps, but you can lay it at his feet. And here's the thing that's so awesome about God. When you lay it down at his feet, you don't have to pick it back up. He takes it. Maybe you're here this morning and maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus. Maybe you're here, maybe somebody drug you here, you know. I used to get drugged to church every Sunday because my dad was a pastor. I want you to know how much Jesus loves and values you. And he does not want to be separated from you. And all you have to do is just ask him. Scripture says, repent, believe, and follow. Now, the repenting and the believing, that's not real hard because he paid the price. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is just say, I'm sorry, I was on this path. I want to get on your path. And he says, welcome. All you have to do is make that decision. Now, here... At Messiah, we'd love to help you follow, okay? That's called discipleship. That's called getting in a relationship. But the first step is to repent and believe. And so if you don't know Jesus today, I want to encourage you. Make a decision. Don't leave here. It's, it's the best thing that will ever happen to you. 
But whatever you're struggling with right now, whatever trials you're going through, whatever decisions you have to make, whatever attacks that are coming down upon you right now, you've got Jesus on your side. Lean into him. God, I love you this morning. I am so thankful to be in this wonderful church. Lord, to be a part of this wonderful community, I am excited to see what you are going to do. Lord, as I sit and stand and look out across this room today and I see all of these wonderful people, I know how much you love them and how much they love you. And Lord, I see some empty chairs in this room today and I know that those empty chairs are just waiting for new followers of Jesus, for new disciples. And I pray each and every day, Lord, for whoever it is that you want to bring and put in those seats. Because I believe the greatest things, some of the greatest gifts, some of the greatest ministry that will be done is in the hearts and the minds of the people that you are still calling, that you are still reaching out to, and you are calling us to love and to live for. So, Lord, just remind us today that you are with us. I pray this in your precious name and everybody says, Amen. Amen.
I just want to thank everybody for being here today to worship with us. What a great service today was. Amen? So good. Um, we hope to see you back here next week at 930. And also, uh, don't forget to come downstairs and join us for some fellowship and some donuts and some coffee. Um, and we'll see you next week. God bless.